that's close to a third of the participants taking part in this survey believe that military should be the primary force for achieving China's foreign policy goals. Wow, <laughs> isn't that surprising? Today, we're going to look at an opinion poll conducted by a Chinese university, Tsinghua University, uh, a couple of months ago and was released uh, only last, just last week. And there's a lot of interesting information here. So if you guys are interested in knowing what Chinese people truly think, this is it. I'm going to put timestamp down below so you guys can jump to the topic you guys are most interested in. I'm going to link the survey down in my description. Let's start with the survey sampling here because it's quite important. First of all, it follows a strict one to one ratio between male and female of all age groups from 18 to I think 70 years old. And another demographic very important, uh, the education level, 9% master degree or above, 76% college education above, 12% high school, 3% middle school. So it's a well educated group of people that they are surveying. So you can expect the people that is participating in this survey can find, let's say, United States on the map. First question, do you, the Chinese, believe that China is secure currently in the international environment? Last year's result was 69% people think is secure, China is secure. This year is 72%, so there's an increase, okay? That, that's pretty good, I say. I want to ask something here, okay? Chinese people in general, uh, no matter their education, okay? feel very confident that if China is provoked into a conflict, whether regarding Taiwan or South China Sea, China can win even with the US intervention. They don't want conflict, but they are not worrying about losing a conflict, especially you know with the ongoing war in Ukraine. Chinese are generally more confident than not if faced off against the overextended United States, for example. Now, this next graph surprised even me, okay? How do you think the extent of global security challenge list below? So this table shows how much Chinese worry about different topics and problems around the world. The higher the score, the bigger the worry, okay? Now, <laughs> this is quite surprising to me. I'm not sure if these are all that has been asked to the people uh, in this survey but according to this table okay chinese worry about the potential international force intervening in the taiwan issue that scored one of the highest okay and the second highest is the tension between china u.s relationship which scored three the taiwan one scored 3.04 but to my surprise I mean, look at this table. The Ukrainian crisis and the Middle East crisis scored the lowest at 2.42 and 2.36. The only issue that scored even lower, <laughs> roughly the same or lower, is terrorism and nuclear war. So these are the things that Chinese people do not worry or concern about at all. So basically, according to this survey, if it is true, Chinese is not really worrying about World War III because Ukraine war, Middle East war, nuclear war, terrorism, all four of these things are, relatively speaking, lowers in terms of priority <laughs> in Chinese point of view, okay? Now, things like industrial decoupling, investment and trade barrier, and risk of artificial intelligence are much bigger concern, according to the Chinese. Which I would say, from my experience, yes, I can confirm people are much more concerned about the economic issue uh, than war. I think Americans are the same here. Uh, people don't really care about Ukraine or Gaza war. If you look at the United States election poll here, uh, presidential election poll, Ukraine war priority-wise is like, is it even in top 20? I'm not sure. It was in 16, 17, I think. A year ago, I think right now it dropped off of top 20, probably. 
Okay, I wonder if this next graph surprised some of my audience, okay? What do you think about the global influence of major countries or organization in the world? <laughs> okay, they've done the same thing a year ago, and there are some changes, okay? Last year, Chinese think that China is the biggest influential country in the world, or party, or whatever. This year, United States overtook China from Chinese people mind from becoming the biggest influential player in the world, scoring 4.6 and China this year only score 4.5, a slightly increase from the previous year. Now, according to this graph, Russia score extremely high as well. I mean, look at this. Russia score an average of four points. And this above the entire EU and NATO. <laughs> I mean, I've been talking to my European friends since the beginning of the war. Almost all of them are pro-Ukraine, right? And anti-Russia. And they keep telling me how bad and insignificant Russia is. And there's no way China will back Russia and how as soon as EU threaten China with, you know, trade relationship with the EU sanctions and tariff, and if it backs Russia, China will back off for sure, okay? Russia is basically nothing but some oversized gas station. But I mean, look at this poll. Russia alone has more influence than the entire Europe combined, according to the Chinese. I think that settles the score. I've been also saying that this Ukraine war has been a double shock to both Europeans and Chinese because many, many Chinese, okay, geopolitical analysts and so-called experts at the beginning of the war really see Europe as mostly sovereign and independent nations who will make decision according to its own interests. And at the beginning of the war, almost all Chinese, okay, geopolitical analysts think that the war will end very quickly. <laughs> on the negotiation table, with European making the call to stop the war because it's not in Europe's interest to continue this war. And slowly, okay, in China, people start to realize Europe is not exactly sovereign. <laughs> the same way Japan is not sovereign, basically. And towards the beginning, there were still arguments regarding whether some European leaders would stood up and finally change course. And their argument. But no, <laughs> nothing changed. And God, I feel so sorry for the Ukrainian right now. It's going to be a tough, tough winter. Oh my goodness. And also to the Europeans, I think many Europeans that I talk to, they think that India's influence is kind of up there with the Chinese. But as you can see from the graph, even Japan's influence is above that of India. I, I won't agree to that. I think India's influence is bigger than Japan, at least. But as you can see, according to the Chinese, Indians also almost have no influence. I, I, I don't know. 1.8. Look at it. I think my Indian's friend here in my channel will not be happy looking at this uh, graph here. Okay, look at this next graph here. What's your impression on the countries or regions below, five being very favorable, one being very unfavorable. And again, Russia here score a whopping 3.66, way above any other regions around the world. So Chinese are extremely favor towards Russians. And there's a general pattern here, okay? The blue bar represent last year, the, the gray one represent this year. And there's a general decrease across the entire world, basically. Uh, U.S. reduced by 0.34 to 1.85, so very unfavorable. Japan is less, that's understandable. And here, even Southeast Asian nations got a reduction of 0.22. EU got reduced as well. So here, according to the index, three is neither. So a 2.75 
attitude towards Southeast Asian country. That's slightly leaning negative, which is to my surprise. I, I do not understand why. I guess is it the Philippines pulling down the entire region? That's possible because from my understanding, Chinese don't have negative attitude towards Southeast Asian nations. But again, it is overall reducing across the board. The biggest reduction, I guess, is with uh, South Korea. South Korea has taken a major uh, political turn and is heavily leaning towards the United States right now and away from China. So it received the biggest drop of uh, 0 0.5. Also with Japan, <laughs> 0.51. I also want to say that Chinese always have this mentality of other people don't understand us. You know, they just do not. But then most Chinese are often too shy to reach out and exchange thought. I mean, just look at here on YouTube. There's really not that many rich, you know, sharing information and thoughts regarding to the Chinese. So if you think about this way, overall, Chinese has been heavily affected by the overall anti-Chinese global media space right now. And it's becoming increasingly defensive towards other countries. Okay. That's how I would say it. Okay. Next question. What is your attitude towards ordinary Americans? Left graph and the US government and its internal and foreign policy, right graph. Oh, I, I want to tell you guys almost half well, a third, if not half, of this entire survey is focused somewhat on United States. And this is what I have been telling you guys, that the Chinese today are hyper-focused on the United States. As you can see here, the attitude towards regular Americans are mostly neutral. 70.3% people say that it's neutral. But attitude towards the U.S. government is very, very bad. Over 80% says that is is very poor and favorable. I think the majority of the Chinese people actually believe that the United States is a democracy, as they say it is, and that the American people are responsible in electing an anti-Chinese government into position. I'm very confident in saying that 99.9% .9 of the Chinese today has no idea what the deep state is. So their understanding of US-China politics is at the more or less service level. But again, very poor view towards the United States government, which you can blame the Chinese because of all those anti-Chinese uh, rhetoric coming literally straight from the US White House and Congress. <laughs> Now, this next graph, I guess, is important for our Arab friends. What style of foreign strategy should China take in the next decade? Even though there's a reduction, most people think China should take a more proactive strategy. So many Chinese think that Chinese is not being uh, active enough on the global stage. So yeah, here on my channel, I think most of the people from the global south have been saying that China is not promoting its own culture, is not presenting itself, is not helping other country enough, and China need to do more. And the Chinese people agree with you guys here. You know, seventy three percent believe that Chinese government should try to do more. Now, comes to the most surprising graph in this entire survey to me, which is the primary force for achieving China's foreign policy goals. Wow, look at that. Economy comes first. That's not too surprising. 41.9%. Military comes second at 30.6%. That's close to a third of the participants taking part in this survey believe that military should be the primary force for achieving China's foreign policy goals. Wow, <laughs> isn't that surprising? And that's three times more than diplomacy, <laughs> sitting at only 11.5%. Okay, I was sitting there. Um, looking at this graph and trying to explain 
All right, all right. Because this entire graph, if you add up the numbers, it goes to 100. So I think when people was taking this survey, they are only allowed to check one boss out of the five. I would say this is not a good way to ask the question. Maybe they should allow the people to pick priority and then look at how they see it. But still, military come out that high. That is truly surprising to me. Now, let me try to explain this, okay? I, I'm trying to explain to myself because this does not make that much sense to me at the beginning. As you guys can see, okay, China is very concerned of regional issues, not distant foreign issues, according to the you know previous graph. However, given our recent experience with the US and Taiwan government and also with the Philippines, most people are not fun of diplomacy because US is not very interested in diplomacy. I mean, just look at how far diplomacy got, you know, in the Ukraine war and also right now in the Middle East crisis. So majority of the Chinese elite do not believe diplomacy is that meaningful anymore, at least not towards the United States. Its economic interests and military deterrence is more important. But yes, towards other regions, countries, sure, but towards the United States and Taiwan, I think people are really turning towards military pressure and deterrence. And if you remember at the beginning of this video, I said that this survey is conducted to a one to one ratio between male and female. And if you guys think about it, male, we guys, okay, we're usually more violent and polarized compared to female, right? Uh, females are usually more uh, prefer like a peaceful solution. So if you isolate out just male in this particular graph, I would say the military portion, the percentage will increase even more and might even surplus economy. So for my long term audience in my channel, you guys should probably remember I talk about the Taiwan issue and I said that many Chinese are kind of giving up on diplomacy and negotiation and it's very leaning on military. And this particular survey basically shows that it's increasing dramatically. And if you just ask the men, I would say military exceed above all other factors here. But again, <sighs> This statistic really surprised me. I, I thought diplomacy would be higher than 11.5%. But yeah, unfortunately, it's getting lower and lower. Okay, the next graph. What do you think about the globalization uh, for China? Is it favorable? Is it unfavorable? It's still high. Yeah, 64.6% .6 people still believe it brings more advantage than disadvantage. Slightly decreased from last year. I don't know. If you ask the same thing to Americans... Uh, uh, the the mega inference American population. What would they think? I I don't think they will be sitting at sixty four point six percent here in the United States. It would be much lower. Okay, next graph. This is not surprising. Ninety percent Chinese believe Chinese influence in the world is increasing, while sixty percent of the people believe American influence in the world is decreasing. Okay. Now there's a bit of a contradiction here because just a few graphs ago, um. Chinese see that the US influence in the world is actually the biggest right now uh, above China compared to last year where Chinese believe that Chinese is one of the biggest influence player in the world. But here it says the Chinese believe that American influence are decreasing. How does that work? Don't the two, you know, survey kind of contradict each other? I would say that over the last couple of months and years, ever since Ukraine war, I think Chinese found out that Many other countries around the world actually do not have that much say when it comes to international affairs, especially Europe. So I guess today's Chinese really see many of these countries as to be kind of semi client state vassal or, or just puppet of the United States. So I guess that's why United States gets the boots because other countries are just so disappointing when it comes to strategic autonomy. So a huge decrease in those countries boosts up United States a little bit. It's just a learning process, I guess, for a lot of people. They start to realize, okay, this world are not 
consists of just independent countries. Many countries really have their hands and legs tied up and not able to make decision without you know having us put extreme high pressure on them okay one more graph here 87 percent of the chinese believe here the us is trying to contain china okay and look at that only 6.4 percent chinese believe us hopes to cooperate with china to achieve shared prosperity only 6.4 percent i i thought it would be higher i i didn't know you know, at least for this group of people that's being surveyed, that they actually understand the global environment the way I do. But it basically correlates with how I think. Here, 48.5% think that US is trying to conduct peaceful evolution on China. <laughs> so some kind of regime change is this, you know, half of the population in China believe United States trying to regime change China. <laughs> Yeah, people don't even believe U.S. want healthy competition, as you can see here. Only 8.2% of the Chinese believe that. Yeah, like I said, close to half of this report is somewhat related to the United States. And, you know, China today is hyper-focused on the United States. Okay, last question, also very important. This survey also includes attitudes towards two international events, okay? The Ukraine one and the Israeli-Palestinian one. Okay, Ukraine first. 42.41% believe that the Ukraine crisis is primarily the responsibility for other third parties beyond that of Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> You're not going to get this kind of percentage in Europe or in US. While those who think both sides, Russia and Ukraine, are responsible account for 35.57%. I believe there's a similar survey conducted last year, but it was not asked this way okay this year they change a little bit last year i think it was about who is to blame uh, is a us nato or russia or ukraine there's no you know both should be blamed russia and ukraine last year i believe that's something like 70 80 percent people blame us and nato but this year yeah they asked the question differently uh 16 percent believe ukraine bears the main responsibility and only 5.94%, less than 6%, uh, think that Russia should take main responsibility, which is roughly the same as the survey conducted last year. They asked the same, you know, is Russia the main to blame? And there was la less than 8% last year. Last year, I think it was something like 80% blame NATO, 12% blame Ukraine, and 8% blame Russia. Uh, it was in one of my earlier videos. Now, regarding the primary responsibility for the Israel-Palestinian war, which I, I never read any survey about this one. So in my previous video, I was just guessing what Chinese people think. I don't have official data, but here it is. Let's take a look. 55% believe that both parties are responsible or that other third party bear the main responsibility. Okay, 39% believe Israel is mainly responsible. All right, while only 5.48% believe that Hamas bears the primary responsibility. So I have been right all along. Less Chinese blame Hamas than even Russia, in this case, being the only party responsible. And 39% blame you know, Israel and 55 blame other parties and both parties this way. Probably the Americans in this case. Wow, these are some good information. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys in the next video.